For this case, we have existing porcelain fused to metal restorations on tooth number 18 and 19. And as you can see, the buckle area of 18, the feldspathic porcelain has chipped away near the margin. So first things first, we are going to remove the existing crowns. Here I'm using a 557 carbide burr. Once the crowns are removed, I am clearing out the interproximal areas and everyone has their own preference when it comes to preparation. I just prefer to get the occlusal reduction taken care of first and then moving on to the axial walls. Here I'm using a coarse football to reduce the occlusal surface. We are using an all ceramic restoration for this case, so ideal reduction occlusally is one and a half to two millimeters, and I do use a prep check guide that shows me what areas need to be reduced even further. Even though PFMs were placed previously, there was still a lack of reduction. So I do most of my gross reduction with a coarse, round-ended, tapered diamond. And once I have most of the reduction occlusally and axially, axially about one millimeter of reduction. And then once the overall gross reduction is completed, I will refine the preparation with a fine, rounded, tapered diamond. And here, sometimes I do like to take a composite rubber wheel to help roll over the sharp angles. We do want rounded internal angles whenever we uh, prescribe all ceramic restorations and especially in this case when you're milling restorations the rounder you can make those internal angles the, the easier it will be for the mill to mill these restorations. So here are the final preparations enough reduction occlusally and axially and then once that is taken care of a very important step that should never be overlooked is gingival retraction. Here I'm using a double core technique. The first layer is a thinner double zero and that will help displace the gingiva apically and a second layer of cord is applied right on top of that to help displace the tissue laterally. We need to create some form of separation not just for digital dentistry, but in dentistry in general. If you're doing it conventionally, it's extremely important. And even more so whenever you are scanning chair side and milling these restorations in your office because, again, now you are responsible for finding those margins. So we are going to utilize the 3M True Definition Intraoral Scanner. And I will apply a very light mist of the contrast agent and it's just a little bit. You don't want to completely cover the areas you want to scan. You still want those areas exposed, but all this will do is help the 3D in motion technology that the 3M TrueDef uses to capture these areas. So I start off with the preparation scans. I start off right over tooth number 18. I get the occlusal areas and I begin my rotations to the buckle and to the lingual and as you can see, the areas are filled in in white. Any areas that are missing, you will see those appear in a, in a dark area with some pink around that. And that will indicate whether or not you're missing that information. And you can just easily go right back over it and sweep over it. The system captures and acquires the information very, very easily. Once 18 is completed, I begin moving slowly toward the mesial and ensure that I capture everything buccal lingual occlusal on tooth number 19 and then I begin moving my way even more mesial to capture a couple teeth toward the mesial neighbors of 18 and 19 and that will help with the design and also matching this quadrant to the opposing scans which will merge together with our buccal bite. When scanning the adjacent teeth it's very important to also include the contact point of the adjacent teeth so in this situation, the distal surface of tooth number 20, you want to make sure that that area is acquired as well. And then I just capture the opposing scans, the entire upper left quadrant, the occlusal surfaces, lingual surfaces, the functional areas, and the buccal surface, which is important for the third set of scans, the buccal bite, where the patient bites down all the way. And it's also helpful to get the gingival margins for those two previous scans, the 
preparation and the opposing to merge those together. Once the data is captured, the 3M TrueDef then sends the model scans to the iOS Fast Design software. And the first step of the process is to set up the case, indicating the type of restoration. This, these are going to be full coverage crowns. Then the type of material, we are going to use Obsidian CAD. The shade is selected, which is C3. And then the next part of the process is to determine the occlusal direction. The occlusal direction just helps the software position the design proposals properly over the preps. Then it's time to mark the margins. And just going back to proper tissue retraction, that's why it's so critical. Because now it's up to you or if you delegate to your assistant, which is also very, very great to use, use while you're using CAD CAM and have them mark the margins and work the design because the software is very intuitive and easy to use. So once the tissue retraction is done properly, you can see the margins very clearly when it comes time to mark it. After the margins are placed, we will indicate the buckle directions. The software is not really sure which direction is the buckle, so you just help guide that with these arrows, and that is just an additional step like the occlusal direction to aid the software and help guide the position of these design proposals. So here I am manipulating a little bit the proposals, the initial proposals, and establishing the curve of speed, the curve of Wilson, having these lower molars tilted slightly toward the lingual, and that just helps to position it properly within the arch. Once the position is set correctly in the design portion, I typically want to ensure that the functional position is set properly. The buckle and lingual position of these molars are set where the buckle cusps are within good function in the central fossa of the upper molars of 14 and 15. Once the position functionally is set correctly, then I usually will make some minor aesthetic changes. The dental technician inside of me wants to make lots of changes, making uh, broader contacts, moving cusps around. It's really not necessary, but I'm just a little bit nitpicky when it comes to the aesthetics of these restorations. But really the software does place very, very good proposals initially without really any, any work needed to enhance that. Once I'm satisfied with the designs, I will send this off to the TS-150. So each of these restorations take about 15 minutes to mill. And during that time, you could actually either work on another patient or a great thing is to work on any direct restorations that need to be performed on the patient. And with the lithium silicate material, you can see it comes out a little bit in a purplish color. It's just a good reminder that you do need to put these in the porcelain furnace for about a 20 minute cycle. And it takes it up to about 810 degrees centigrade for 10 minutes. And during that process, it crystallizes and transforms the material into its final hardened state. But here I do try in the restorations prior to putting them in the porcelain furnace for its crystallization cycle because at this stage I want to adjust the contacts to how I like them. I verify that the occlusion is where I want it. And if there's any adjustments that need to be made, it's much easier to do when it's in this pre-crystallized state. So I do enhance the aesthetics. I do take advantage of the required porcelain oven cycle and add a few stains to the occlusal surface and the axial surfaces. We were able to deliver these restorations for this patient within a single appointment, replacing failing PFMs on 18 and 19 with, I think, very beautiful results for any type of dentistry, chair side or traditional. So one of the great benefits of having a chair side system is to deliver and be able to deliver a beautiful result within the same appointment.